Okay, so we've talked about components, how we'll always start our designs now by creating a new component. I've also told you that we can use components in an assembly. So what is an assembly? If we're looking for a definition, it's just a way of relating two different components through the use of a joint. So that, you know, maybe that the two components are just stuck to each other in a certain way that's useful as a joint. Um, but it's more likely that we're doing something else that incorporates movement and a relationship between the way those two move uh, in, in relationship to each other. So that relationship is defined by joints. And you can see there's a joints folder here in the browser and it contains my slider joint. Before we talk about how to create joints, uh, let's just talk about what a joint actually is. If you remember, we have six degrees of freedom, right? So uh, we have three axes, the X, the Y, and the Z in our 3D world. And so for each of those axes, we can either take an object and move it along one of those axes. It's also called translating along that axis. So we can translate along the X, we can translate along the Y, translate along the Z. Uh, we can also rotate along those axes. Rotation on the X, rotation on the Y, rotation on the Z. If I take a pen in, in my right hand and kind of uh, take a snapshot of where it is and then kind of waggle it and spin it and move it over a couple feet, whatever I've done to move it from one place to the other and change its position in space, I can describe that change just through using those six degrees of freedom. There's nothing more that I could do to that pen or that object uh, beyond manipulation uh, in the form of translating on one of those three axes or rotating. So what, what does that have to do with joints? Well, joints uh, essentially take two different components and say that they can move in a relationship to each other, but only in the degrees of freedom that it hasn't locked out. So if you take a look at this slider, can you guess, this is our Z axis, just as a hint, uh, can you guess which uh, degrees of freedom are allowed and which have been locked out? I'll tell you the answer in a minute. Right now, we'll just we'll, we'll, uh, come over here to a new design and create some joints to see how that works. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, this is a blank design. I'm going to create a component. I'll just leave the name as component one, and I'm just going to create a box. I'm doing this so that you can kind of have some uh, refresher as to how to make components. Uh, it's 50 by 50 by 50. And before I make my next component, I'm going to select the root component. So when I create this one, it'll be a peer to that original one, not a subcomponent. And for this one, I'll create another box. I'll put it on that same work plane. And it again will be 50 by 50 by 50. I'll choose my root component again, and I can see my two components side by side. I see everything happening down there in the timeline. To create a joint between those two, I can use this icon right here that says Joint. If you drop down the Assemble menu, you can also see it right here, and the J key is the shortcut. So uh, what, what can I do here? Well, once I choose Joint, it's actually asking me what kind of joint do I want. A rigid joint locks out all of the degrees of freedom. So if I choose a component here and a component here, I'm not only am I cho choosing the components, I'm choosing where, like what the point is here that is going to relate to a point over here. So if I choose this point on that face and then this point on this face, it'll flip it over. You didn't, couldn't see the flipping because it's a cube, but it flipped it over and made sure that those two points were related to each other. Now, uh, if I choose motion again and animate, that's the relationship between them. They're stuck together. Uh, what else can I do? I could do revolute. And what that's done is made sure that it's able to rotate along the Z axis, but everything else has been eliminated. All the other degrees of freedom have been eliminated. So again, I animate that and it shows the only degree of freedom that's left. They don't all lock out uh, everything but one degree of freedom. For example, uh, slider definitely does just a single degree of freedom, but cylindrical. Uh, cylindrical is kind of like if you have a straw in a cup, like with uh, one of those plastic cu caps on the cup. Uh, you can move the straw up and down, but you can also spin the straw. So that means we have rotation along an axis, and we also have uh, translation along that same axis. So 
uh, that's how we create a joint. Once we've got it in place, we can double click on the joint here and turn it and see what it looks like at different degrees. If I click off of here, sorry, I think I have to hit enter. If I hit enter, here's a new thing that's interesting to us. Uh, these two icons just appeared. When I move the component, uh, it noticed that I moved it and it's asking me, do you want to keep this here from now on or do you want to revert it back to where it was? So if I click revert, it'll put it back to where the component was initially. Uh, doesn't mean I can't rotate the joint and do whatever I want, but uh, once I've moved it, it asks me, are you trying to keep it there? And so I can choose capture position and if I do, it actually creates a little feature down here on the timeline that represents the, the repositioning of that component. So if, for example, I right click and delete that, item from the history, it goes back. So um, that's how we create joints. Those are some of the different kinds of joints. If we go back to our slider example, you can probably guess now that this uh, rules out all of the degrees of freedom except for translation along the z-axis. There's no rotation allowed anywhere and there's no translation along the other axes. I want to show a couple other things here while we've got this slider example up. One is um, that if you'll notice, it has some features that uh, stick out on the bottom of that green slider. And what's happening here is it's, uh, it's colliding with the other one. There's no regard for uh, physics or real life here. And so I'm going to position this here. Uh, there are a few, few things I want to show you before we end this video. And one is if I capture its position, there's a useful inspection tool that I think this is the time that maybe I should mention it. Uh, if you go to interference, this can tell you if you select different components or objects, bodies, whatever they are, uh, you can click comp compute and it will show you where they are overlapping. So this is a place where you can identify problems with the design. Let me go back to before I captured its position and now it's back to where it was. The last two things I want to show you are one, um, we can see that it's, it is causing a problem, right? There is some interference that happens. And so there are a couple ways we can fix that. If I hit escape here, it'll get out of moving the joint. I can right click on the slider and choose edit joint limits. What that'll allow me to do is say that there's a minimum, uh, range that it can be in. And so that's, um, say here. And there's also a maximum, which we're going to say is here. And if I animate that, now you can see it only, whoop, oh, that first one didn't quite work out, but um, stop that and see if, well, so you get the idea. I, something happened there, but um, the idea is that it will keep it within certain bounds. And uh, you can also have whatever its resting spot is by checking that. So uh, I will hit OK and just let you know that there's another way that we can deal with this, which is to actually go into the assemble menu and choose uh, enable contact sets. And what this will do is actually kind of simulate physics in a way, right? It will make sure that one does not intrude on the other. That's kind of computationally intense for the computer uh, and really is only good for certain circumstances. This one, adding the limits worked fine. But if we look at an example like this, so with the Geneva wheel, uh, if we right click and hit animate model, it's actually uh, using contact, set, contact sets to make sure that this orange one literally pushes the other one. So uh, that's, that's how we can uh, make kind of a a simulation of how these two parts interact beyond just moving. A, a third way that we can do it is with uh, motion sets and uh, I'll show you an example of how that works. But if I, um, sorry, motion studies, if I look at this motion study, we can see one joint moving and then a second joint also moving after it. So those are a few ways just to give you a, a kind of a head start and thinking about how joints might go beyond just a simple sliding or rotating or uh, one of the other joints that we've seen. One last, last thing I want to show you, the third thing is that these are, uh, these components are right up against each other. So if you're really trying to design something that would be able to slide in real life, we'd have to think about having a little bit of uh, slop here or tolerance. 
So one way we can do that is by going to the modify menu and choosing offset face. If I choose this face and this face and then uh, drag them a little bit out, that's a lot out, but maybe negative 0.2 millimeters. Uh, what I can see when I turn on this other component again is that there's a slight gap between the two and that might be just enough to allow it to slide. 